Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is KPZ. We didn't get an Xbox intro because I'm not playing a game on the Xbox. This is Gallup Racer 2006 and it is a PlayStation 2 title made by the world-renowned Japanese video game company Tecmo. That's right, the same people that brought you Tecmo Bowl brought you a gambling horse racing game. All right, uh, hopefully I've turned the volume down low enough so it doesn't interfere with me talking. Basically, we're just gonna plug in our name here as the name of our jockey or stable. And we're gonna make our, uh, what they call the silks or the um, uniform of the jockey here. I think I went past my color. I did. All right, there it is. Uh, I want myself to be very visible, so. And I know you're wondering, what if you don't want patterns on your sleeves? Well, it's very simple. You just change them all to the original color of your silks and then you don't have to worry about that. Same thing with your boots. You do not have to have a color or you can just use black and it blends in. And I accidentally chose that, which means we're not gonna wear my my silks. We're gonna wear the game silks. Normal, normal difficulty level. I haven't played this game in about four years. Um, so you can't really tell, but there was a lot of button mashing as we get into the race because I don't, I don't remember which one hits the whip and then from match to match, I didn't remember because I'm a dumbass because I was just smashing all the buttons trying to get the horse to go. So anyway, if you're just starting off, um, just go into the title collection. The second one down is for breeding horses and that's very important to do, but we're not gonna do that in the beginning. That 10,000 points, think of it as dollars. And so you've got to get a horse and race. And if you breed the horse and use all the money, you won't be able to enter him into a race. So one of the best horses starting off is going to be a horse right here called Mist Horn. Uh, it is a male horse and is fast, is responsive. He's got good stats and just about everything but breaking. The uh, double circle is the best stat. So he really excels on dirt unless it's wet, turf unless it's wet. He doesn't have any special abilities and that's fine. You don't need them. Um, good at any kind of direction and a really good recovery rate. The interval, the double circle is the best. You can see the little graph. That is his performance curve. Some horses have really different ones. So make sure to keep an eye on that. I'm not sure choosing older, younger horses makes a difference. And so we are going to get started right in the beginning. Even if you bred the horse in the stable, the horse is two years, seven months old, and you start racing them right away. So there's no waiting for the horse to grow up kind of deal, like maybe in earlier versions of this game. All right, so here are the tracks and the distances and stuff like that. So we get some grade three races here, which is the Lowest level of graded stakes. This OC is an open classification and that any anybody can enter. Grade one is the highest level or the hardest level of racing. And there's actually a, a harder level than that uh, back in that first screen called the Field of Dreams or something like that. So we're just looking for an OC race we can put our horse into. Now we can enter these ones that are grayed out but we can't enter the ones that are red. We're looking for one that's green. Uh, we're not gonna find one. So why don't we start with the Cincinnati Stakes, a little shorter than our horse would like to go. You can see our horse prefers eight to 15 furlongs. This is a six furlong race. It's in Lexington, Kentucky, probably Kentucky Downs. Clockwise track for two-year-olds. And the purse is 3,200. I don't know why they use G instead of points. You know, 
Uh, anyway, it's a turf course. It's six furlongs, which is a measure of distance used in horse racing. I didn't bother looking up how long a furlong is. So anyway, it's long enough to get tired when you're running. How about that? All right, let's just go right into the race. So I really have no idea how this is going to go. Although I would call myself an expert player of Gallup Racer 06. I have not played it in quite some time. All right, there's the horses. They're in the race. F, those are females. Uh, so a lot of fillies in this race. The track is rated uh, firm and firm, I believe. The FF over in the corner. And I'm not sure what the SY... Oh, that's synthetic grass. So this is not real grass. It's just like field turf. So we're going to bet on ourselves. This is the best way to make money, is betting on yourself, aside from winning the race. So in case I lost, I didn't want to bet at all. All right, so Lemon Salon is going to be our chief rival. There is our horse, our odds to win a 1.8, so they're not great odds for betting. So we would win like 360 if we won the race and get our money back. So maybe a total like 760. All right, the Cincinnati Stakes, that's just the name of the race. If you go to a racetrack, it could be like the, the Home Depot Stakes, you know, just depends on who's front in the purse. You want to match those two little arrows up by hitting the X button. Now that's another thing. I play Xbox and the controller setup is different on PlayStation. You want to get out of the rough track unless you're a horse that likes it in the rough. You want to be in this green. I, I see a lot of other videos of people playing this game where they race in the blue and I don't agree with that. I like to race in the green. Uh, but that being said, you can see the little arrows. My horse prefers being just off the lead or maybe a little bit farther back. So that's the ideal positioning for your horse in this race. All right, uh, we're getting close to the end here. A furlong, 0.2 to go. We're in the final furlong now. I found the whip button and Misthorn pulls away. Guy was coming up, but he didn't have enough track left, so I didn't bother whipping again. And there is our first win in the Cincinnati Stakes in Misthorn. Um, so it's really funny because when we look at the race, we're going to race all over the country. And if you said match up track names to these places, a lot of these tracks are not open anymore. Horse racing is really in a downslide. It was very, very popular, um, like 1900, 1910, 1920, 1930, 1940. But as time has gone on, even though I think it's amazing to watch, and they don't last very long. So you, even if you lose your bet on on a race, two minutes later you can you can have another bet, you know. And you go out and spend a day at the track, and smell the grass, and look at some beautiful animals racing, and um, it's just a great time, you know. Go with your friends, knock back a couple beers, bet some money, lose some money, win some money, whatever. And it's just a great way to spend a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. All right, here our next race. It is a green race for us, the Pennsylvania Stakes. And in Philadelphia, uh, eight furlongs. And for two-year-olds, there you can see it is a counterclockwise track, so we're going to be going the other way. And we'll just get right into that race. Um, and, you know, they made this game up until 2010 on PlayStation 2. I think they have a relatively recent version of it, but it's JAL only. So if you have a Japanese version of the PlayStation 2, you can play it. Um, or I'm sorry, of a PlayStation, you could you could play it. But And you, you have to speak and read Japanese <laughs> or read uh, Japanese and understand spoken Japanese um, because the game is in Japanese. They don't make any kind of American game anymore. They, I want to say there was another PlayStation game called Breeders' Cup, which came out um, just for maybe like 2003, 2004. The most recent version of this game is called G1 Jockey. Um, and I want to say it was a PlayStation 3 title, um, but it, 
from what I've read, it's not really the same, so I didn't bother trying to get that. Um, I just really love this. All right, grade three Pennsylvania Stakes, and you can see the course record down there at the bottom, one minute, 31 and eight tenths by general reason. So keep that in the back of your mind. If you get a really powerful horse, you can always try to set some course records. All right, here we're falling back a little bit. So you can see I'm gonna use the, um, the D up directional pad. I prefer using directional pad, although I think my controller that I was using was a little sticky because you'll see sometimes my horse will like lunge in or outwards um, because the D-pad is sticky. So right there, it lunged outwards. Here I'm just trying to get clear. There's too much in front of me. I think my horse is fast enough to go around the outside. So getting down, the horse starts spreading out. Keep this in mind. So in the beginning, they crunch in. In the end, they spread back out. So I'm going to try to find a lane here when I accelerate that I can just split horses. There, the controller's stuck again. Somebody's going up on the outside, so I accelerate to match him. And you can get blocked in here, so keep that in mind. And I just using the, uh, the reins, I guess, to encourage my horse. And we pull away for the victory. We Number two. And we're gonna race about five races here in this little video. Um, ironically enough, I cut out the part where it said, do you want to save? And I had to put no, because I don't know where my memory card went. All right, there's our winning time. And we did uh, beat the next horse by three furlongs, or three horse lengths, pardon me. Um, and so we won our bet, and we will collect on that. All right, and back here to the info screen. So green, you could race your horse on green energy. In the beginning, I like to race on blue energy. So here we've got a grade three in Boston. I know that track closed probably five years ago. Uh, I think it closed right before the year before COVID. Um, so no longer open. And that is truly a shame. The Harvard Stakes. I should look up all the names for these tracks. All right, so it's a pretty big field. We're going nine furlongs on synthetic, and it is a fast track. F is fast and F is firm, fast and firm. So uh, I'm remembering more of this stuff as I see some more of it on the screen for the second time. All right, so we're betting ourselves. I think we're going to bet 900. All right, I just bet my change. All right, there is Mist Horn. And I actually worked at a horse track in Washington State. It's not in this game. The name of the track is Emerald Downs. I believe it is still open, hopefully. I uh, was a bartender there, and that's where I learned about horse racing. Although I did watch the Kentucky Derby all the time as a kid with my grandfather, who owned horses. I have a funny horse riding story. I've ridden a horse once. I got on the horse, the horse took three steps and bucked me off, and I've never gotten on a horse again. Although I did ride an elephant when I was in the military over in Thailand, and just for recreation, not as like a war elephant or anything like that. All right, here we're kind of in the back, so I'm trying to get back up into the middle <clears throat> of the pack here. And you don't want to race in the yellow, so I'm hitting down on the D-pad to get that back down. Ideally, for me, I want to race in the green. We'll talk about the little, like, uh, jackpot thing there. With a, you can see the red circle thing going on. If you can make that into like an infinity loop, um, your horse will go into hyperspace. Now this horse is not prone to doing it. Some horses are more prone than others to have that ability. As we crush to the front, um, we don't need that to win. 
this horse has tremendous power and speed and responsiveness. So um, we don't need to create the infinity loop to win. But if you can create the infinity loop, your horse basically goes into hyperspace. It's like when R2-D2 turned the part around in the Millennium Falcon. Um, it is really kind of funny. The screen will break like broken glass and your horse will take off and just blow all the other horses away. All right, so we did set a track record here in Boston. Uh, seven length victory. And you can see SS in the field. SS is the best rating. So feel is something for this horse that is really strong. And feel or control is the ability to ramp the horse up or speed it down, in my opinion. So a pretty good race there. Let's see if we can find a grade two. Uh, I think we just saw one, San Francisco. Uh, this might be Golden Gate Park, I think the name of it is. Maybe I should look it up on the internet. Does San Francisco have a racetrack anymore? San Francisco horse track is called Golden Gate Fields. All right. In theory, anyway. So here we are at Golden Gate. Eight furlong, synthetic, fast and firm. And we're gonna buy a ticket on ourselves to win. And I think this is where I forgot my number. <laughs> It's a lot easier. Uh, oh, right now I'm hitting the R, every RL thing on the controller. All right, I'm number 11. I'm the favorite 1.5 to win. So that means every dollar you got to, you know, you're not going to get not much but a dollar fifty back. So not good. So you're get basically getting half of what you bet back if you win. Um, but it is what it is. So I think we'll just bet 900. And these names for all the horses are randomly generated. The horse aren't supposed, there's a disclaimer in the beginning. The horses aren't supposed to represent any real life horse. Back when this game was new, people did try to predict or figure out who they were with varying degrees of accuracy. But some of the horses must be based on real life famous horses. I just don't know which ones are which. And uh, those websites probably are long in disrepair because it's been almost 20 uh, years since this game came out. When I can get a hold of my memory card, I am planning to do a career playthrough of this to see what we can do. I know there's not a lot of horse racing content on YouTube. I don't particularly want anything to do with Farlap, I think. Um, that game would have been better off not being made. I know there are people who think that something is better than nothing, and that's true. We shouldn't have to play a uh, horse racing game on PlayStation 2. Um, you know, there's the Breeders' Cup. You would think the Breeders' Cup people would be interested in getting people interested in horse racing, and video games are a great way to do that. Um, just think of how many people are interested in stuff um, based on video games, but they haven't, in their wisdom, decided to spend the money to get EA Sports or whoever to create a horse racing game. So we're stuck playing Gallup Racer 2006, kids. Anyway, there was another dominating victory there by Miss Torn, where I again fumbled to hit the right button to whip the horse. And, uh, you know, but that being said, when I play this for real, I will figure it out. Another seven length victory over the second place horse. And again, feel SS, that's the best rating. And we're gonna take in a little bit of money there. All right, so we've raced a grade three, a grade two. Now let's see if we can find a grade one race that we can race in to show you the apex of our skill, even though we really don't know what we're doing anymore. All right, here it is, the Young Crown Cup uh, out of Miami. Uh, 
I should Gulfstream Park, uh, eight furlongs uh, for two year olds. So Gulfstream Park is just north of Miami. All right, so it's raining. Uh, so M is for muddy, Y is for yielding, I believe. Uh, if I'm, is this a dirt race? It can't be a dirt race. Well, RN, I, I believe is raining. Maybe M is moist. <laughs> uh, y is definitely yielding now. All right, we're going to bet ourselves and the favorite in what's called a box exacta. That means we can finish in either order and I will win. Um, we'll see how that goes. And there's our horse. And I think the uh, the uh, guys leading the horse around only dress in uniforms in Japan. They definitely don't do that here in America. All right, here's the race course. You can see we're racing this outside track. It is a dirt, uh, it is a grass track. I don't know why they would have put M there. It's not, it's not muddy. I mean, it's grass. So I, I don't. I'm going to have to do some research before I play this game for real and uh, see what all that stuff means. Anyway, quick betting tip in real life. You're going to bet on a race and it's the track is sloppy. Like most of our tracks here in America are dirt tracks. The track is sloppy. You want to bet a gray horse. It actually has to do more with the width of the hoof of the horse, whether it does well or not on some kind of tracks. But gray horses, for some reason, really love the mud and do well in them. I know that's very uh, much a stereotype, but that's what we're going with. All right, pretty good start there. You can see I almost got the arrows to touch. And we're off in the grade one. What was this called? Young Crown Stakes or Young Crown Cup or something like that. Who knows? All right, we're at the back of the pack. That's not a good place to be. So I decided to cut to the outside here. And right now my controller is not behaving. There we go. Now we're on the outside. And as long as we get in front of these other horses, as we come up around the side, we won't have to worry about them when the track okay. comes into the final stretch and they widen back out. Here you can see we had to go a little bit faster than I wanted, but we're in a, a really good stalking position on the leader, number six right now. And my horse is just naturally speeding up. And now I'm fumbling for the whip. There's the whip button. And look at us pull away. Number one got caught way back there in the pack. He does have a little burst right there at the end, but he goes nowhere. So my bet is down the tubes. We absolutely crushed that grade one field. And so definitely a great horse to start off if you're gonna play Gallop Racer 06. Mist Horn. Bet on yourself, win those races, get that those points built up, then use those points to go into the stable and breed a horse. And when I do my full playthrough, I will be breeding and racing horses in this game. You can see SS for feel and stretch because we hit the whip at the right point and we did not win because number one did not hold up his end of the bargain. All right, so that is going to be the end of the races. Uh, let's talk about some special racing series in Japan. We'll go look at our data here. We did not win any horse titles. In terms of the results, we had five races. We had five wins. One grade one win. As you can see, there are nine normal and nine all-around horse titles. But as you win them, you'll unlock additional horse titles. Here are the tracks, Washington DC, probably closed. Uh, Miami, that's Gulfstream, Toronto, San Francisco, Golden Gate, New Orleans, Philadelphia, 
Phoenix? I don't know about Phoenix. San Diego, that might be Del Mar. Boston, Lexington, that might be Kentucky Downs. I got some tracks in Japan, Kyoto, Tokyo, Osaka, Hiroshima, Nagano, Yokohama, Sapporo, Fukuoka, and Kobe. In Europe, we've got Leeds, Dublin, these are all going to be grass tracks, Birmingham, London, Cambridge, Lyon, Marseille, Normandy, and Paris. And the special track, Chicago, that might be Arlington, New York is probably Saratoga, Twin Spires of Churchill Downs there in Louisville. Um, New York's probably Saratoga. Um, let's see if I can remember the rest of these. Uh, Baltimore, um, what's that, the Preakness, uh, Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, I can't remember that. I can't remember the California tracks. Uh, and then Texas. So international special tracks, Singapore, Sydney, Hong Kong, and Dubai. A triangular track in Dubai. Pretty neat. All right, folks, that is a look at Gallup Racer 06. When I get that memory card, hopefully I can bring a career playthrough for you here on the channel. And you'll be seeing more of Mist Horn to start off so we can build up our budget and breed our own horses. Thanks for watching.